Hello, in this video we are going to see how to block the customer's progress at checkout using Checkout UI extensions and the Buyer Journey Intercept API. The reason we may want to block progress at checkout is because we may have additional fields added through Checkout UI extensions that we require customers to fill before completing their order. So by using the Buyer Journey Intercept API, the customer will not be able to complete the checkout until we have validated that every condition we need has been met. For example, a medical devices store might be required to collect the medical license number of the customers to validate they are a qualified professional before completing the transaction. So in this situation, with a checkout UI extension, we can add a field to collect the medical license number and block progress at checkout until the customer fills it with a value that is in the correct format. And if there is a way to validate this, say with an API for example, we can even block checkout until the customer enters a valid license number. So the buyer journey intercept API is very flexible in that regard. Now let's go to Visual Studio Code and see how to create a checkout UI extension that is capable of doing this. Now I'm going to run here npm idiot Shopify app latest to start a new app. Let's name this block checkout. And then let's use the extension template. So now now that this has installed, let's run. First, we have to take this from here or send it into that folder. Whichever one is easier for you, it's going to take that out of that folder and now run npm run Shopify app generate extension. To generate the checkout UI extension with this, I'm going to create this new app, keep the name. And here I'm going to look for Checkout UI. And let's name this once again. Log Checkout Visit Progress here. Log Checkout Progress. And let's use TypeScript and React. And let's wait for the dependencies to install. Now, in the next steps, I am going to assume you know the basics of Checkout UI extensions. But if you don't, I have a video covering that, which I will link in the video description. So now that this is all generated, we have to make a few adjustments here. In Shopify.extension.toml, we have two in extension capabilities. Enable block progress. So we're going to add block progress equals to true here. And we also have to update the target. So this extension is rendered in a different place. In this case, let's change this to be purchase checkout contact dot render after. So after the contact information, we are going to render this extension. Then we have to copy this and here in SRC checkout.tsx have the same exact value in this place. Now we can run npm run dev to see this extension in the development store. I'm going to select here block checkout progress And this is going to install in the store or create a development server that will allow me to install it in the store. So here, I'm going to now, after pressing P, click on install your app. And after doing this, I will click here. And my extension is being rendered after the contact information, which is exactly where we want. Now let's update the UI of this. We are not going to render a banner. Instead, let's add a block stack from this package over here. Let's add a heading from this package over here. And in the heading, we are going to say additional information. And then let's add a text field. And here, the label. Let's say that this is, uh, as this is no word store, Let's just say that this is a snowboarding license, for example. This thing probably doesn't exist, but this is just an example. Then the error for now, let's keep this as an empty string. We're going to populate this later. The value. Let's actually create a state for this. So, license and set license. Let's do use state. Then this will start being an empty string. So the value here would be license and then on change we are going to get value and we are going to set license to this value 
Let's also create a state for the error. So error and set error. And initially we are not going to have any errors here. And we can remove this translate over here and this banner over here because we are not going to need this. We also don't need this use API from here. So we can remove it. Let's save and let's see what we have. So we have this additional information field rendering in the place we needed to render. Now this section we just added looks a little bit too close to the one above it. So let's add some padding to the top to improve the situation. So here we need to use the padding property. This can receive an array and a way to use base padding for the top padding and then none for every other direction. So this is looking much better now. Now let's see how we can load the checkout progress. So for this, we are going to import the use by your journey intercept hook. And we are going to call this right away. This accepts a callback function and the function itself is receiving an object with the cam block progress key. Based on the value of this, so if cam block progress, we are going to do something else. We are going to do something else. Now, why do we receive this as an object here? If in Shopify.extension.double we already said that this extension can block progress. The reason for this is because, as you can see here, even though in your Shopify.extension.double you are granting access or declaring that you want access to blocking checkout, your merchant can still allow or disallow this capability from the checkout editor. So it is up to them to allow your extension to do it. Therefore, you are going to get their decision here. Now, in development stores, and while running this locally, Shopify will simulate that the access has been granted. So we don't have to worry about this for now, but it's good to have validation here in case the merchant denies access to blocking the checkout for one reason or the other. So if we cannot block progress, the only thing we can do is return behavior allow to let the customer continue their checkout as normal. But if we can block progress, here is where we will add any other validations we have in place. So for example, let's say the validation for the license number in this case will be for the license length to be exactly 10. So if the license length is different than 10, then we are going to return the behavior of blocking the checkout. And we are going to give them a reason. Must enter a valid license number. So actually, so here, you must enter a valid license number. And perform here. Perform is a callback function here we can get with the result of this validation. In this case, result dot behavior will always be block because we are hard coding block here. And you could be have a dynamic value here. So this is what this callback is for. If resulted block, then does set error to you must enter a valid license number. So the same reason we are given here. But we are going to be displaying this as the error message of the field. So let's save this and let's see how this looks in action. So I filled the checkout with some placeholder information here. And for the payment method, I used one of the credit cards that Shopify let us use in development stores, which in this case is just one, with any date in the future and any three numbers as security code, and then any name for the name of the card. And if I click on pay now, you can see here that I'm not able to continue, and I see this error over here. Now, if I start typing something here, for example, one, two, three, four, five, and I continue, this is still embedded. And actually, on change, we can say, we can remove the error, so set error. So if the customer enters an invalid value here, they will see the error. But then if they type something else, focus somewhere else, so for the on change combat trigger, the error will disappear. But if we try paying again, they will see that this number is still invalid. But if I try like this, then this is valid and I will be able to continue my checkout.
So there you have it. Let's wait for this to complete. And we are going to be in the thank you page for the order. And before closing this video, if you're wondering what this recent property is for, you can see here that this value isn't presented to the buyer, so it doesn't need to be localized. The value is used only for Shopify's own internal debugging and metrics. So what this means is that whatever text you add here isn't going to be presented to the customer. Instead, you need to track the errors with your own state, as we did here with this error state, and set the error over here. So the error we were presenting to the customer was what we said here. This reason here is never presented to the customer. It is just used by Shopify internally for debugging. And there you have it. This is how you can block checkout progress in Shopify using checkout UI extensions. If you found this video helpful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify-related content, and I will see you all in the next video.